The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. Exhibit A, Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And today, tomorrow, always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. Mr. S.M. Cutts, independent tobacco auctioneer of Oxford, North Carolina, has sold over 300 million pounds of tobacco at auction. Recently, he said, Year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Ripe prime leaf. Take it from me, that tobacco's really fine tobacco. I've smoked Luckers myself for 17 years. At auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Cutts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Passengers, please step to the rear. Step to the back of the bus, please. Oh, isn't this awful, Catherine? you think some gentleman would get up and give one of us a seat. I beg your pardon, ladies, but would any of you care to sit down? Oh, you're very kind, isn't he, Catherine? He certainly is. He got up and gave the three of us a seat. <laughs> yes. He has a very big heart. <laughs> Jack Benny's announcer? Well, yeah, yes, yes, I am. Oh, I just love that program. It has so many interesting characters. They act so crazy. Oh, Jeanette, they only do that to make people laugh on the radio. They, those things never happen in real life. <laughs> oh, they don't, huh? Well, now let me tell you something that really happened yesterday. What was it? Well, Jack Benny, Phil Harris, and Dennis Day dropped into the corner drugstore to get a bite to eat. What are you going to have, Phil? I don't know, Jackson. What are you going to have? I don't know. How about you, Dennis? I don't know. Gee, it's so hard to decide what to... Hmm, just look at that. Waiter! Waiter! Yes, sir? Look, there's lipstick on my glass. Well, there's water in it, too. Wash it off. <laughs> <laughs> Their bread should be that fresh. Well, Phil, have you decided yet? Yeah, I think I know what I want, Jackson. What'll it be, sir? A roast beef sandwich and a fifth of milk. <laughs> Phil, milk doesn't come in fifths. Well, how do I know? It's the first time I ever ordered this stuff. <laughs> Dennis, have you made up your mind yet? Yeah. Wait, bring me a dish of ice cream with a strip of bacon on it. <laughs> Dennis, ice cream with bacon? That's ridiculous. Why don't you have it with chocolate syrup? Okay. Wait, bring me some bacon with chocolate, chocolate syrup on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you going to have, Jackson? Gee, I don't know. Hey, waiter, what would you suggest? How about lamb stew? Mm, no. Some veal cutlets? Mm, no, I'm going home soon. I just want something to hold me together. How about some scotch tape? <laughs> Look, just get their orders, and I'll think of what I want. Let's see. Hey, Dennis, how's your Colgate show doing? Oh, it's fine. I like the idea of having two shows. Gee, I don't know what to order. Yeah. How's your Fitch bandwagon doing, Phil? Great kid, great. Alice just picked up my option for another 13 weeks. <laughs> Maybe I ought to Holy have... smoke, Jackson. Haven't you made up your mind yet what you want to eat? Well, how can I think with you fellas always talking? I got two shows. I got two shows. I got two shows. <laughs> That's all you hear. Two shows. You ought to be ashamed of yourself putting other people out of work with two shows. I haven't got two shows. They've got two shows. Well, bully for them. <laughs> what? Hey, 
your orders, gentlemen. Now, what'll you have? Well, I think I'll have a hamburger. And let's see, do you have any hot chocolate? No, but here's a Hershey bar and a match. <laughs> Oh, nuts. They're in it, too. <laughs> Never mind. Just, just give me that piece of chocolate cake right there. That's vanilla. It is not vanilla. It's chocolate. I'll dust it off and show you. <laughs> well, don't bother. Just give me a piece of that huckleberry pie. You want to make a bet? <laughs> <laughs> well, give it to me, whatever it is. A man could starve to death in here guessing. <laughs> Now, give me that pie. Hey, Jackson, Jackson. Huh? Hey, look. Look at that beautiful blonde coming toward the counter. Oh, yeah. Hey, Phil, she's heading this way. I'll move over one, then she'll have to sit between us. Hmm. Forgot I was sitting on the end stool. <laughs> Help me up off the floor, Phil. Well, there's a switch, me picking you up. <laughs> well, look, fellas, I gotta go home now. Look, I'll see you later. Hey, Jackson, so wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jackson. What about the check? Jackson, what about the... Hmm, after 11 years, you'd think I'd know better. <laughs> How tight can a guy... Hey, Dennis, what are you looking at? That magazine over there. Ronald Coleman's picture's on the cover. Oh, yeah, Ronald. Gee, look at him. With those broad shoulders, intelligent eyes, pearly teeth, dimple in the chin. If he was one inch taller, he'd look just like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Ronnie. Man, he sure is handsome. Thank you, old fellow. It was awfully nice of you to say that. <laughs> hey! Hey, Dennis, you know something? You sounded just like him. Yeah, I like to do imitations. Yeah, you're doing pretty good, too, kid. You know, I can hardly wait. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Hey, look, I got a great idea. Hey, you want to have some fun, kid? Yeah, how? Oh. Well, now, look. Let's give Jackson time to get home, then we'll call him on the phone. You disguise your voice like Ronald Coleman's and invite him over to his house for a party. Oh, boy, come on, let's go in that phone booth. Well, take it easy, take it easy now. We gotta give him plenty of time to get home. He's walking and he ain't really 38, you know. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting, let's play the jukebox. One of my records is in it. Oh, your record's okay. Here you are, I'll drop a nickel in there, huh? a cabaret and me as the night went along there was suddenly a song and me all the world seemed to say that they loved the cabaret She'd see me Mimi sang for me alone Came in a patch With a passion For dancing with the one That I adore Taught her to dance In his fashion And for me She's singing no more On the rue de la Paix, There was once a cabaret And Mimi Now I'm sitting sad and dreamy Just for Mimi such a long walk out to Beverly Hills after all. <laughs> mm, I might as well plant grass out of my front yard. They won't let me park cars here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Let me see. Now, where's my key to the front door? Here's the key to my car. Here's the key to the back door. Here's the key to my hope chest. Key to my trunk. Key to the garage. Here's the key to that can of salmon I had last night. <laughs> Why do I save those things? <laughs> oh, here it is. Is that you, boss? Rochester, what are you doing at home? You're supposed to be out at the Hillcrest Golf Course looking for my golf ball. It's no use, boss. I've been looking for that ball for three weeks now, and I just can't find it. Well, did you look behind all the rocks? Mm -hmm. You look in all the bushes? Mm -hmm. Did you look down the gopher holes? I even took the gophers to a doctor's office and had them x-rayed. <laughs> you had the gophers x-rayed? We found six acorns, a bunch of roots, a Canadian penny, but no golf ball. What? One of them had gallstones and he fooled us for a while. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, taking gophers to a doctor's office. I wish you would... Wait a minute, Rochester, what's that, what, what's that wiggling around your pocket? A gopher? I thought you'd like it for a pet. Oh. Look, boss, he's peeking out at you. Oh, isn't he cute? Look at that sweet little face. He's got blue eyes, just like mine. <laughs> I wonder if I could get his teeth straightened. Huh? <laughs> Imagine the patter of little gopher feet around the house. <laughs> Say, Rochester, how'd you happen to pick this one to bring home? He's the one with the Canadian penny. <laughs> oh. When do we operate, boss? <laughs> Stop joking. Now, Rochester, you better go back out of the golf course and keep looking for the ball. It must be... Hey, I just thought of something. Maybe we looked in the wrong place. Now, we took it for granted that I hit that ball in the rough. Maybe I hit such a good shot it landed right on the green. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Well, we'll look for the ball tomorrow. By the way, Rochester, what are we going to have for dinner? Six acorns, a bunch of roots, and southern fried gopher. <laughs> I don't want that. Just open a can of sardine. Okay, give me your key, Gene. Here you are. And hurry. I haven't had anything but a dusty piece of pie all day. I'll be in the... There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, old boy. This is Ronald Coleman. Ronald Coleman? Well, Ronnie, how are you? Splendid, splendid, thank you. Good, good. How's Benita? Who? <laughs> Benita, your wife. Oh, oh, I thought you said Santa Anita. <laughs> Benita's fine. Good, good. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, what are you doing tonight? Nothing, nothing. Why? Well, Benita and I are having a little party at the house, and we'd love to have you come over. Tonight? Gee, that'll be swell, Ronnie. What time should I be there? Uh, just a minute. I'll ask Santa Anita. <laughs> Who? Uh, Benita, my wife. Oh. Hey, Phil, what time shall I tell him to be there? Nine o'clock and tell him to bring his girl with him. Hello, Jack. Benita says nine would be fine and to bring your lady friend with you. You mean my girl, Gladys Abisko? Yes, we've both been anxious to meet her. Hey, kid, kid, tell him it's a costume party. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, when you come over tonight, we wish you'd wear something. <laughs> what? A costume party, you know. Oh, a costume party. Gee, that'll be fun. We'll be there at 9 o'clock sharp. Goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, Jack. Hey, Rochester. Rochester, I've been invited over to Mr. and Mrs. Coleman's for a party tonight. You want me to get your tuxedo? No, no, this is a costume party. Gee, I don't know how to dress. Oh, why don't you wear your toupee upside down and go as a bird's nest? <laughs> <laughs> Say, maybe I... No, it would tickle me. Hey, wait a minute. I know where I can get a cowboy costume. That's it, I'll go as a cowboy. Are you gonna take Miss Livingston? No, no, she's out of town this week. I'm gonna take my old girlfriend, Gladys Abisko. She'll love it. <laughs> Gee, Gladys, it's nice out tonight, isn't it? It sure is, Feeney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
glad you were able to make it. I thought that since it's so close to Thanksgiving, you might be busy. Oh, I got Hilda to fill in for me. But can Hilda do your work? Oh, sure. She can pluck turkeys faster than anybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a feather in her cap. <laughs> You're so witty, Speedy. What people say in Georgie Jessel, I'll never know. <laughs> Gee, Gladys, you'll like the Coleman. Ronnie and Benita are regular guys. Even though they're high class and interested in things like opera and art. Art? Oh, then maybe. No, no, I no, can... Gladys, no. Don't show them your tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> keep your keep, keep your sleeves down, you know. Say, Gladys, would you like a cigarette? Sure. Here you are. A lucky strike. No, they're made from that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Listen to the man who knows, I always say. <laughs> and you know, Gladys, quality of product is essential to continuing success. You're telling me. <laughs> you know, and another thing, Gladys, lucky strikes are so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Gosh, Gladys, you look so cute in your costume. So Western. So do you, Speedy. We were both lucky to find that costume shop open so late. Yeah, they certainly fixed me up with a complete cowboy outfit. Lasso, 10-gallon hat, and a gun. I can't wait till we get to the Ronald Coleman. Oh, Ronnie. What is it, Benita? windows before you got into bed. I did, darling. Well, if you're ready to go to sleep, I'll turn out the light. No, 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 just a minute. I'm not quite through reading. Uh, you know, Benita, this is really exciting. You must read it when I'm through with it. Oh, I've already read it. You know, there's one part there where... No, no, I... no, don't tell me, don't tell me. I want to find out myself what Mumbles is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's an interesting fellow. Well, you can find out tomorrow. I'm going to turn out the light. All right. Just a moment. There. All right. You can turn it out now. You know, Benita, I know you won't think I'm conceited, but Random Harvest is one of the best pictures ever made. <laughs> I agree with you, darling. Now shut off the projector and let's go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm glad we turned in early tonight. Got a lot of retakes the studio tomorrow morning. Yes, I know. Well, good night, Ronnie. Good night, darling. Benita, you're snoring. <laughs> I thought that was you. Oh, goodness, it's the front door. I wonder who in the world could... Well, it's the butler's night off, and there's only one way to find out. Uh, go down and see who it is, darling. <laughs> Suppose it's a burglar. What would I do? I don't know. I've never been in a picture with that particular situation. <laughs> it's probably a telegram. Now put on your robe and go to the door. Oh, all right. All right, all right. I'm coming, I'm coming. Imagine getting a man out of a nice warm bed. Yes? Here we are, partner. Me and the little woman came over the door. I get along, little dog. Get along, get along, get along, little dog. Uh, just a minute. Uh, just a minute. There must Step be some... aside, you bomber. Fuck Benny rides again. <laughs> Inside and join the fun. I'm right behind your butt. <laughs> but Jack, 
Jack, there must be Tell some Tell me, partner, fight. where's Benita? Well, she's upstairs. We we'll go the... get the little woman down here. Now, look, Go on, it. tell her, you barman. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Benita, Benita, it's Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yes, and he has a gun. <laughs> Lend him what he wants and send him home. <laughs> he doesn't want to borrow anything this time. He thinks we're having a party. <laughs> a party? It's not funny, my dear. You should have seen Benny and that girl bursting in here with those silly costumes. Costumes? Yes, Benny's dressed up like Roy Rogers. Oh, what does the girl look like? Trigger. <laughs> you're angry at Jack. I mean, that's no reason to insult the girl. She's probably a pretty little thing. But how old is she? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere between 35 and 40. Oh, she's no chicken. Not with those turkey feathers all over her. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine Benny doing a thing like this. I have a good notion to... Yes, that's what I'll do. Oh, darling, no. We can't stop sending our laundry to him. <laughs> I suppose not. Uh, he is a master with the starch. <laughs> anyway, I think it's absolutely disgraceful Well, well, for get him back to. into bed. I'll go downstairs and tell him to leave. No use, darling. He won't even listen to you. Say, I have a better idea. Get dressed. What? Well, I know what I'm doing, Benita. Get dressed. <laughs> Gee, I wish they'd hurry down. They've been upstairs a long time. They sure have, Speedy. Uh, while we're waiting, let's turn on the radio. Okay. Gee, that's our song they're playing. Let's dance, Snooksy. It would be an extreme pleasure. <laughs> See, what memories this brings back. Our first meeting, we were dancing like this, remember? And as we danced, you sang the words into my ear. Sing them again. Go ahead, Gladys, will you? Okay. Huh? I love to hear you sing. Um, Peg of my heart, I love you. We'll never part. I love you. I always knew it would be you. Oh, come on, dance a little closer, Speedy. Okay. <laughs> Those feathers are tickling me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had to get into my costume at the place where I work. Well, don't worry. Gee, I wonder why the Coleman's aren't down yet. Ronnie, do you think it was right of us to sneak out the back way and go to a movie? Yes. And it'll teach Benny a lesson. Well, what movie are we going to see? I don't know, and I don't care. Anything to get away from that man. Well, they're still in our house. How long do you think they'll stay? I have no idea. But tomorrow, open another airwick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you for being upset. It's amazing the way Jack Benny brings out the worst in people. Uh, how do you mean? Well, for instance, take that playwright fella, Norman Krasner. Well, what about Mr. Krasner? Well, usually he's a very brilliant conversationalist. But as soon as he gets around Benny, all he can say is... <laughs> Lisa, please, please, people are staring. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, here's the theater, Roy. Oh, yes. Um, two loge seats, please. Here you are, sir. By the way, miss, we didn't notice. What picture are you showing? The horn blows at midnight. <laughs> what? Ronnie! Ronnie! Let go of the girl! It's not her fault! Ronnie! Gene oh. Speedy, uh, do you think the Colons will mind us going into their kitchen and getting something to eat? No, it's half past twelve and we're hungry. Gee, they sure have a big refrigerator. Yeah. I wonder what program they want it on. <laughs> now, let's see what's inside. There's some ham and half a roast beef and 
Well, how do you like that? Only this morning I sent Rochester over and they told him they were out of eggs. <laughs> and look, they're lousy with butter, too. <laughs> well, say, Gladys, look. Look, there's a turkey. Please, not on my day off. <laughs> Well, let's eat something. Look, Ronnie, you can see them through our window. They're still in the house. Yes, and I've got to get some sleep. Well, there's only one thing to do, and I'm going to do it. Come on, Benita. Why, Mr. and Mrs. Coleman, you've got the wrong house. You live next door. We know where we live. Just show us Mr. Benny's bedroom. We've got to get some sleep. But, Mr. Coleman! Good, Good night, night, Manchester. Manchester. Good night! Ladies and gentlemen, one of the rarest privileges anyone can have is to be able to say, I saved a life. By now, we all know what is meant by the word care. C-A-R-E. This nation's help in alleviating the food shortage in Europe has saved thousands of lives. So let's keep on sending our contributions to C-A-R-E. C-A-R-E, care, New York. Let's give again and save another life. CARE, C-A-R-E, CARE, New York. Thank you. Now, Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Remember what happens at the tobacco auctions? Year in, year out, at market after market, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. Mr. George Webster, tobacco warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, has spent almost half a century working at tobacco markets in the South. Not long ago, he said, At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy a fine tobacco. Tobacco that makes one grand smoke. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 29 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Sunset Boulevard, next stop. Please leave the bus by the rear exit. Well, this is where I get off, girls. Mr. Wilson, that was a very funny story you told us about Jack Benny, but a thing like that couldn't really happen. Oh, yes, it could. That's why I'm taking the bus to work. Why, Mr. Coleman. Benny's car broke down, and he's using mine. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> 